my topic uh, is a little bit simpler, but uh, there are certain dilemmas which needs to be redressed. So I'm going to talk about a few very, very important areas of the center which, which are hidden and problematic. And with the subsequent lecture, at the end of lecture, I'll be giving you a few pearls to how to diagnose certain critical problems of placenta, like placenta accreta, increta, and paracreta. And uh, those will be very helpful for you all. As we know, placenta <coughs> is interesting, but it's a little bit ignored because when we do a scan, we are more focused to fetus about the, we are concerned about the lyca, the blood flow, etc. But we don't give much attention to the placenta. But I'm sure after this lecture, you will be more focused to placenta, giving more time to the placenta. So placenta is interesting. It's usually ignored and incompletely understood. But I'm sure not after this lecture. Uh, there are certain areas we got to visit in this lecture. We got to talk about embryo and anatomy. We got to know the size, shape, location, parenchymal changes, and the function of the placenta, of course. <coughs> Role of placenta is very interesting. It's named for the appearance of Greek placus, meaning the flat cake. It's a discoid shape and is responsible for its <coughs> nutritive, respiratory and its excretory functions. It is often overlooked in routine evaluation. Normal gestation only gets attention when abnormality is detected. Embryologically, it has two parts. One is from the fetal, another is from maternal. From the fetal, the villi of the chorion frondosum are fetal in origin and contain arterial plexus supplied by the umbilical artery whereas the maternal portion of the placenta is composed of decidua plus the talus, which lines the intervillous space. This is how it looks like. If we go... Can I have... This is the fetal part where the, the umbilical artery and vein comes and make the villi, and this is uh, the, the placental part and the myometrion up here. Uh, there are uh, decidua, which are very, very important, which plays roles in the uh, uh, placenta formation and its uh, anchoring of uh, the trophoblast. And we know that uh, this is the, uh, the basalis part and the pritalis and the capsularis. This, this is the most important, with the villi anchor over it and there is the myometrium up here. Appearance of placenta are interesting. As we know, it appears echogenic tissue. By 10 weeks, it's small, it's a band-like, and it's seen as an echogenic, echogenic tissue, which is very smooth in outline. Proper villi formation after 10 to 12 weeks, whereas true maternal blood flow after 12 weeks, that's called the true placenta. So that means before 12 weeks, it's the placenta is in progress of make, making. After 12 weeks, it's the full mature placenta which has the maternal flow. Intraplacental arteries are seen up to 16 to 18 weeks onward. And the best seen placenta in the earlier part is by TBS exam. Placenta has variable thickness. It may be thick or it may be thin. Thin placenta is also called placenta malacia. Which, is, which can be due to systemic vascular disease, chromosomal anomalies, IUGR, marked polyhydramnias, so you see every day and now and then, and sometimes hemorrhagic diseases like micro-infarctions. Thicker placenta, if it is more than 4 cm, then we call this placentomegaly. We see in fetal hydrops, antipartum infections, maternal diabetes, and in anemia. What is the significance? of the abnormalities of placenta. This is very important to know. Abnormality of placenta are important to recognize owing to the potential for maternal and fetal morbidity and mortality. Pathological conditions of placenta include like placental hemorrhage, 
gestation is trophoblastic disease, already talked about, retained product of conception, non trophoblastic and placental tumors, mats, and some of the cystic lesions. <coughs> What are the imaging modality we use? Commonly we use ultrasound. Everybody sitting in this hall is using ultrasound for the placenta. It remains the imaging modality of choice for evaluation of the placenta. But MR has a diagnostic value when further characterization is required, particularly in setting up invasive placental processes like abnormal placental edema, like placenta accreta, increta, or paracreta and also in the gestational trophoblastic disease. Before 12 weeks, you don't see the retroplacental space, which is mandatory to evaluate throughout the pregnancy. And because that contains the vas major vasculature bed of the placenta. It is homogeneous, it has sharp outline, and this is the earlier part of the placenta in the earlier pregnancy. This is yet another, this is like nine weeks pregnancy. You see a band echogenic up in the fundal area, extending down, but you don't see the proper retroplacental space at this time, you don't see vessels in it. There we are. The pregnancy is now 14 to 15 weeks duration, and you see the retroplacental complex, and while doing the Doppler, you see the bed with vasculature and the interplacental vessels. This starts from the 12 weeks onwards time. There are many morphological variants. Placenta can be bilobed, it can be succinctured, it can be circumvallate, and this can be placenta membranacea. It has immense importance, we should know. Now we talk about these one by one. What is a succinctured lobe? There is a big chunk of placenta, which is normal and is having the umbilical cord with it. But there is a small part of it, which is separate to it, but it's attached to it with a small membrane which contains vessel. This is very important. Now, what is the significance to identify this? The significance is these vessels can rupture. So there can be bleeding from, these, from this area and there, is, there can be retention of this accessory lobe during the delivery of the pregnancy. So it's very mandatory. You should identify both parts and document in your report that there is a succinctured lobe which is connected by thin membrane which contain vessels. Next. Second one is bilobed one. You see the difference between the previous and this one. This one contains one big chunk and the small part of it. But this one contains equal parts. These have equal parts. This is called the bilobed and the, the cord is attached in the central part. There is no known risk, risk involving in this type of bilobed placenta. Whereas, this is called the circumvallate placenta. It has small base and the big, the chorionic part. You can see the rolled margin of the chorionic part, but the small base. These placenta are again liable to rupture. There is a risk of the abruption of such placenta. This, this is called circumvallate placenta. Another time, this is called the placenta membranacea. It is thin, it's all around, and it usually ends up in a previa. So it's very, very significant to identify such placenta, which is all around, because it comes down in, in front of the interloss. So these are the four morphological common appearances of the placenta. The other variety is placenta velamentous. It's the insertion of the umbilical cord. This velamentous insertion of umbilical cord into a thin membrane of tissue extending from the margin of placenta. That means the umbilical cord is not attached to the substance of the placenta. It is attached, attached to the margin and the membrane. These are again liable to bleed. If they have to be diagnosed and they have to be um, declared in your report. A few words of grading. This is very important. Uh, what's, what does the grading of placenta mean? It literally means that this is a, basically the maturing process of the placenta which goes along naturally. It's not pathological until unless it's a premature. There are three grades with a grade zero maturation. Grade zero means if the placenta is less than 18 weeks, but it is uniform and echogenic and smooth chorionic plate. There are no calcification in it. This is called the grade zero. 
as we saw a few of the early picks. Grade 1 is from 18 to 29 weeks, which is occasionally parenchymal calcification and hyperaquatic areas. This is called the grade 1 maturation of the placenta. I'll show you the image. Grade 2 is more than 30 weeks. Occasional basal calcification or hyperaquatic areas may also come comma type densities at the chorionic plate. That means here are only the parenchymal calcification in grade 1, whereas in grade 2, there are also parenchymal along with the basal calcification. Grade 3 is in the, at the term more than, you say 39, but after 36 weeks you are able to see significant basal calcification, chorionic plate interruption by the indentation. <coughs> and early progression to grade 3 placenta is concerning and is sometimes associated with placental insufficiency. Here we are, here is the importance. Otherwise, it's a natural process, it goes throughout the pregnancy from grade 0 to grade 4, nothing doing if it is according to its time. But if it is before 32 weeks, if placenta is mature to the grade 3 before 30 or 32 weeks, that can lead to fetal placental insufficiency. This is uh, grade 0, you don't see, you see homogeneous placenta, you don't see any calcification, no hyperacute areas. This is grade 1, you, you, you may see fine stipple calcification in the parenchyma. This is no basal calcification, this is grade 1 calcification. Grade 2 calcification, this is scanned, this has fundoposterior which has got mature too. Because there is the basal plate calcification as well as intraparenchymal calcification. This is uh, the mature grade 2 placenta. And this you see very often, you see cotyledon calcification, rounded, basal plate, scattered, and this is called the grade 3 placental calcification. A few words about uh, placental uh, antepartum hemorrhage. My worthy professor have already talked about this. There can be placental hematoma, placental abruption, placenta previa, vasa previa and placenta accreta, increta, and paracreta. This is the dilemma I'm going to solve today. Uh, hematoma can be retroplacental, it can be well circumscribed on color, Doppler interrogation, absence of internal blood flow. This finding allows differentiation of hematoma from the other placental masses. Let's have a look at a few of them. This is intraplacental hematoma. You can see this is different from this main parenchymal tissue. This is a bit echogenic, but this is hypoechoic. And on Doppler, there's no flow. You find flow here, but you don't find flow here. This is a hematoma. Retroplacental hematoma has certain causes. Preeclampsia, cigarette smoking, not in our part, but in development, yes, venous obstruction, trauma, and chorioamnios. If hematoma more than 30 to 40 percent, it strips off placenta from its place. Poor outcome. This is very important. You got to give the volume of the hematoma, how much the volume of the placental hematoma is. So few words, abruption, risk of abruption for the placenta. Abruption is maternal cocaine, cigarette smoking again, hypertension, male babies, and trauma is one of the cause of the abruption. This is how it looked like. Look like the look at the aquagenic placenta and you see the black hematoma here. Abruption literally means separation. So this is a separation of the placenta from the myometrium due to this collection of the blood. Another example of the abruption, placenta here, separation of from the myometrium and there is the abruption. Now coming to the main topic, the morbidity, morbidly adherent placenta, which is called the placenta accreta, increta, and paracreta. What basically is the, what's going on actually there is, there is a defect in the normal decidua basalis from the prior surgery or instrumentation. This could be due to myomectomy, this could be due to DNC, and uh, very commonly due to cesarean sectional. There would be abnormal adherence or penetration of the chorionic villi to or into the uterine wall. Classified on the basis of depth of myometrium in VN, the mortality rate is about 7% if it is timely detected and very managed in the experienced hands. 
So there are three types, placenta accreta, we know that's a superficial invasion of the basalis layer, that is important, approximately 75% commonly seen. Then there is increta, which invades the deeper layer of the myometrium. And the third variety is placenta paracreta, even deeper invasion involving the serosa or adjacent pelvic organs. These are the different types. Up here is the normal, you see the placenta and there is a decidua intact, the myometrium, accreta, the, you see the placenta has attached to the superficial layer, in increta it is invaded to the myometrium and the percreta, it has gone through and through the myometrium, the placenta grows through the uterus and extends to the nearby organs. Risk factor for these increta and percreta are Number one is the placenta previa. In the most of the cases, more than 90% is the placenta previa. This we have to remember. When you see previa and previous history of cesarean sections, you should be vigilant. Number two, again, the prior the cesarean deliveries, increasing parity, increasing maternal age, and prior uterine surgery. These are all the risk factors for abnormal adherence of the placenta. So what are the sonographic features of abnormally adherent placenta? One, we have talked about previa, it has to be previa in more than 90% cases. Number two to remember is, we see placental lacunae with turbulent flow. This is very important. This is a very highly sensitive feature for a placenta accreta, increta, or paracreta. I'll just show you the images, how important it is. Because its sensitive is, sensitivity is more than 80%. When you see lacunae in a placenta, low-lying placenta, there is a high chance of abnormal adherence. Number three, the, the abnormal color pot, uh, Doppler imaging. Number four, loss of normal retroplacental clear space. Five, reduced myometrial thickness less than one millimeter. And you see gap in the retroplacental blood flow. I'll show you how. So we know the normal appearance of placenta, once again revisiting it, placenta, placental space. On Doppler, we see normal continuous flow in the retroplacental flow and the placenta is homogeneous. We don't see any venous leg, we don't see any lacunae, this is normal placenta. So among these we said number one is previa, there has to be previa in more than 90% cases. So there are different types of previa. Previa is literally means, previa means something just anterior to internal loss. So there is something between the internal loss and the fetus that is called the previa. So the previa means low lying step one. If, if this is within two centimeters, this is previa type one and it's just reaching the os, it's previa type two. And if it is covering, it's previa type three. And if it is symmetrically distributed to the both walls and completely covering, this is previa type 4. The upper two are called the minor previa, the lower two are called the major previa because the os is completely covered. So one of the features to diagnose the placenta, accreta, increta with the background history of cesarean sections, previa has to be there in the 90% of the cases. This is how it goes. Uh, this is the uh, internal loss, if you see, and the um, placenta is covering. This is complete previa. Again, type 3 previa, internal loss up here, and the lower edge of placenta is covering. This is incomplete or partial placenta previa. This is complete. The whole of the placental uh, substance is seen in the interior wall, posterior wall, and is completely covering. This is called the previa, complete previa. Yet another example of complete previa. So what are the pearls to diagnose the abnormal adherence? Placenta previa itself raises the risk for placenta abnormal adherence due to implantation over a highly vascular, poorly contract lower uterine segment. So to diagnose accreta and creta, Again, I repeat, more than 90% is the placenta previa uh, in the background of previous surgeries. Number two, lacunae. This is most important. Vascular structure of varying size and shape, 
inside the substance of placenta which create a moth-eaten appearance or a Swiss cheese appearance differ from the vascular lake. This is very important. These structures differ from these. We normally see the vascular lakes which have low velocity. They have good rounded margin. They are smooth. But these lacunae have different shape. They are irregular in appearance and their velocity is different than the normal. This is how you see. This is low-lying placenta. You don't see the placental space. You see number of cystic areas which you have, haven't seen in a normal placenta. These are irregular in outline. They are sparse, they are scattered in the placenta. When you see in a low-lying placenta such lacunae, the bell should ring in your head. This is going to be abnormal adherence along with the other features. Thank you very much. Yeah, again, if you see the low-lying placenta, lacunae inside, there is no retroplacental space, and you see the chaotic vessels. The vessels are not in continuation. They are broken. So three features, previa, lacunae, chaotic vessel, this is going to be uh, accurate. Yet another example, number of lacunae, which gives the cheese, um, cheese appearance up here, and you see the different kind of vasculature. So pearl number two is, the presence of prominent lacunae has the highest positive predictive value for placenta accreta. It is sensitive more than 80%. So when you see low-lying placenta and you see lacunae, there is the chance of 80 to 90% of chance of present, being placenta accreta or increta in the background of previous surgeries. Number three, abnormal color, abnormal color pattern. You see dilateral channels with diffuse lacunar flow, irregular vascular lakes with focal lacunar flow, which I have already mentioned, hypervascularity linking placenta to bladder. We can see the hypervascularity, which is extending from placenta to the bladder, and dilated vascular channels with pulsatile flow. I'll just show the velocity and other things. And there can be gap in the retroplacenta wall. They shouldn't be regular. So this, is, this was the pearl number three. This is how it goes. Legs, lacunae, irregular in outline. You don't see normally in placenta irregular in outline. And there is a flow in the wall of the uh, unit bladder. Number four, there is a loss of retroplacental space. A retroplacental hypothetical line usually see with normal presentation. Absence of this hypothetical line associated with the placenta accreta. So along with other features, you've got to know uh, the loss of retroplacental space. So though this is how it goes. I'll show you a few examples. There is loss of retroplacental space, prominent lacunae up here, highest uh, positive predictive value, increased vascularity at the interface of the uterus and the bladder. This is placenta accreta. Again, number of lacunae, chaotic flow, another example of accreta. And uh, yet another, this is example of the placenta increta, a gone step uh, gone ahead. Number of lacunae, loss of space up here, and this is another example of placenta increta. If we do the Doppler, you hardly see interface between the urinary bladder and the placenta. That is lost, but there is chaotic flow at this. There is discontinuation flow at this level. This is a very hard and uh, very sensitive sign which can lead you to diagnose the placenta accreta or increta. These are the recent example. I told you the velocity goes higher. Up here, it's almost touching the 15 centimeter per second. You see number of lacunae chaotic flow and the velocity go in the venous lake so called is gone up to the 15 centimeter and in the placenta paracrita putriana placenta tissue beyond the outer confines of uterine myometrium increase vascularity again you see the beyond and again the number of lacunae loss of space in the uh, interface another example look at the velocity in these lacunae this is gone up to 24 centimeter if you, if you go for a velocity in a lake of placenta, it is about 5 to 10 centimeter. But this has gone up to 25 centimeter. That's a very, very sensitive sign again, predicting that this is not a lake, this is a lacunae, which can lead to the diagnosis of the placenta accreta. Another example, 
and this is very recent and the number of lacunae chaotic flow loss of space between the placenta and the unibladder this is a placenta accreta very florid case of placenta accreta so summing up summing up the features for the placenta accreta and creta we got to identify placenta previa we got to identify a prominent placenta lacunae with turbulent flow velocity more than 15 centimeter this is very very important feature number three we got to identify abnormal color doppler imaging with chaotic vascular uh, pattern there is no continuous pattern it's a chaotic identify loss of normal retroplacental clear space and sometimes uh, there is reduced myometrial thickness less than one millimeter so take home message is although uncommon Abnormalities of placenta are important to recognize owing to the potential for maternal and fetal morbidity and mortality. Sonography remains the dominant imaging modality for evaluation of placenta. MR imaging is useful for further evaluation when increased tissue characterization is value, particularly in invasive placenta processes, that is placenta accreta and gestational trophoblastic disease. Thank you very much.